Welcome to this video tutorial on the topic of creating a model in case of a bridge restoration. In this video, you will learn how to create and design a model. In our example, we have already imported the necessary model data via the Serona Connect portal and created a corresponding case in the administration phase. Therefore, we will switch directly to the model phase by clicking on the double arrow. In the model phase, we will first define the model axis. For this, we will use the recommended standard procedure and align the 3D model optimally in the occlusal, buccal, and mesial view. Then we will move to the next step, set jawline. In this step, we align the jawline using the blue dots. Next, the model is trimmed, although this is not a mandatory step when creating a model. The draw margin step, however, is highly recommended. It is worth noting that in the model app, you can check and correct the preparation margin. However, making all necessary corrections now will allow you to skip that step, as the corrected preparation margin will be automatically transferred to the model app. In our case, we have already finished making corrections and will move to the model app. We open the system menu and click on option Apps. By clicking on the option InLab Model 18, the app will open as a separate application. First, we will look at the 3D model and can easily see the preparation margin shown in red. In this module, there are three phases, and depending on the phase you are in, you will have access to different tools. We will begin in the Prepare phase with the tool Clean Model. After activating the tool, a cut line is automatically drawn in the upper and lower jaw. This line marks the transition between the scanned model data and the future model base. Before we start cleaning the model, we will open the function Display Objects in the Page Palette and deactivate the upper jaw. The procedure for correcting the cut line is similar to the procedure for adjusting the margin line. You start by double-clicking on the line, then single-click until you reach the point where you want to reconnect with the existing line or you want to end the correction. To finish the correction, double-click again. In our case, we have already corrected the cut line of the lower jaw, so we will switch to the upper jaw and then deactivate the lower jaw. When cleaning the model, make sure that you leave sufficient distance to the cut line, particularly in the area around the preparations for creating model stumps in the next step. In our case, the line is located close to the preparations, as the intraoral scan has not been carried on over to the vestibular side. A smaller distance between the line and preparations is not recommended. Various functions are available in this tool. By clicking on Reset Models, you can reset the newly defined cut line. By activating the Project Line option, the changes made on one of the jaws will be directly transferred to the opposite jaw. Using the Model Height slide controller, you can adjust the height of the model base. Please note that insufficient height may result in unstable support of the stumps. We will leave the height at 6 mm. Aside from the height, you can also define the width of the model base. We will calculate our model using an expansion of 2 mm. Clicking on Apply will start the calculation. After creating the model, you can still change the height or width of the base. As an example, we will change the height to 8 mm and recalculate the model. The calculation has also been performed for the opposite jaw. We will activate the lower jaw and check the models from different angles. Without making any further adjustments, we will move to the next phase, the design phase, 
by clicking on the double arrow. In the design phase, we will go through the steps Create Stumps and Add Supports. Please note that we will demonstrate the step Create Gingiva Mask in our tutorial Creating a Model of an Implant Case. We activate the tool Create Stumps and move our 3D model in a vestibular view. Before we start calculating the stumps, we can adjust the settings. For example, you can define the gap between the model and the stump. This value should be adjusted based on your experience and is changed by moving the slide controller. This value may vary depending on the type of printer you are working with and the material you are using. Activating the Create Floor Crater option results in a cavity in the model base around the stumps so that they can be removed more easily. By activating the Create Control Window option, a control window will be calculated where you can check the fit of the stumps. The Create Ditch function allows you to create a ditch for the stump below the preparation margin. The depth of the ditch can be defined using the slide controller. We keep a depth of 1 mm and click on Apply to calculate the stumps. Once the calculation of the stumps has finished, they will be displayed in a slightly darker shade in the 3D model. For demonstration reasons, we will check the model and all settings made previously. In the upper jaw, the cavity for the stumps is clearly visible. In the vestibular view, you can see the control window. In order to look at the stumps, we select the Display Objects option in the Page Palette and deactivate the upper jaw. In this view, the crater for the stumps is clearly visible. Next, we will activate the upper jaw again and switch to the step Add Supports. There are two tools available for you in this step. The options Add Connectors and Add Bar, which we will start with. We move the cursor to our model and double-click to define the starting point of the bar. Then we will move the cursor to the opposite side and double-click again to define the end point. Next, we will switch to the option Add Connectors. With this tool, various adapters of model holders are available to you. In our case, we will select a dense ply bar connector. We will move the cursor to the bar and double click to place the adapter in the middle. We'll also set additional support struts. To show how this is done, we will insert one strut at the canine level and two more struts at the end of the alveolar ridge. At this point, the support struts can still be adjusted. By single-clicking on one of the struts, it is activated and will be highlighted in green. Additionally, various directional arrows will appear. As soon as you move the cursor over a directional arrow, it will be highlighted in yellow and the strut can be adjusted by holding down the left mouse button and moving the mouse. Using the displayed circular arrow, you can rotate the strut around its own axis. In the same way, you can also make changes to all elements placed on the model in this step. We will end the design phase here and move to the last phase, the finalize phase, by clicking on the double arrow. The final calculation of our model has now been made and you will again have various tools available in this phase.
Using the Form tool, you can apply, smooth, or remove material. We start with the option Cave Out Model. This option is used to cave out the upper and lower jaw model. By moving the Thickness slide controller, we can now define the remaining wall thickness. In our case, a thickness of 3 mm is ideal. We will start the process by clicking on Apply. The upper and lower jaws are now caved out according to the defined thickness. Next, we will switch to the tool Text Label. Adding a text label ensures that the finished model can be assigned to a patient. By placing a check mark in the recess field, the added text is recessed. When the check mark is removed, the text is applied on the model. We move the cursor to our model and write In Lab on the base of the lower jaw. Before we continue, we will deactivate our tool first to avoid accidentally placing further text on the model. Finally, we can then export our model data. For this, we open the Export option in the Page Palette and deactivate the option Single STL File as we wish to create a separate STL file for each element. The export is initiated by clicking on Export STL. A window opens where you will automatically see your disk drives. In our case, we have already created a folder called InLab on the desktop and choose this as the destination for our files. We'll name our case Patient1 and then click on Save. Back in the InLab software, we will minimize our window and check the saved data. The software has exported a total of four STL files for us one file for the upper and one for the lower jaw, and one file for each stump. With this, the design of the model is complete, and you can close the model app. Thank you very much for your attention. We would like to wish you every success when working with InLab.